Welcome to the second of our three videos of worship for the 29th of May 2022. In this video, Susan is going to read us the account of the ascension of Jesus in the Acts of the Apostles, and then Ian is going to help us think about it. This morning's reading is taken from Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. Jesus taken up into heaven. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the days he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many compro convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, when he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift that my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the time or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. As Ian speaks to us, in church the bits of Bible reading are going to be read for us by Linda, but here on the YouTube video I'm reading them, I'm sure you'll notice. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning I'm going to talk about the ascension of Jesus into heaven, as mentioned in Acts chapter 1, and at the end of Luke's Gospel. Luke, of course, wrote both. So let us look at what Luke said at the end of his Gospel. When Jesus had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. You'll notice that this varies somewhat from the reading in Acts. In Luke, we see the effect of the ascension on the disciples. It fills them full of joy. If we look at John chapter 14, their initial reaction was one of deep sorrow and anxiety. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. So why was this? Why were they sorrowful? We need to go back to chapter 13 to discover why. Why chapter 14 is cut off from the end of chapter 13, who knows? But it shows that the New Testament was sometimes chapterised in a very strange way. Let's look at the end of chapter 13. Jesus said, My little children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow now, 
but you will follow later. Some of us are old enough to remember a film in the 1960s called Quo Vadis, which literally means, where are you going? The question that Simon Peter asked of Jesus. So why was Jesus going? He was going to prepare a place for them and for us. He was also going away so that he could send the Advocate, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit to give them and us power from on high. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. I want to examine what it meant for the disciples and what it means for us. As Christians today, we do not give due regard to this part of Jesus' mission of redemption. We celebrate Christmas, the Incarnation. We celebrate Good Friday and Easter Sunday. We celebrate Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came on the people, just as Jesus promised. What we don't do these days is give due regard to the monumental event that was the Ascension. Now what does it mean to ascend? In our language the word ascend means simply to go up. If you ascend a mountain, if we're not careful we simply regard the ascension of Jesus as going up into heaven. But from the earliest period of biblical history the word ascension meant that you weren't merely ascending or going up, you were ascending for a purpose. And that purpose was to be enthroned as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Jesus was going back to heaven to receive the glory that was his from all eternity. His work on earth was accomplished and he was going back to seat at the right hand of the Father as priest and king. He left for his investiture and his coronation as King and Lord of all. We know that Jesus reigned in heaven before the incarnation because the Bible tells us that he did. The prologue to John's Gospel starts like this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John is at pains to point out that this Jesus who was crucified was co-eternal with God. There was never a time when he was not. He was there from the beginning of creation in heaven with God the Father. Where can we find evidence of that in the Old Testament? Let's begin with Psalm 110. David said in verses 1 and 2, The Lord says to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. The Lord will extend your mighty scepter from Zion, saying, Rule in the midst of your enemies. Seated at the right hand of the Father. Where have we heard that before? So let's look at Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, sitting on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were ser seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. In both of these cases we see that the Lord is addressed as being in small case. God the Father is always addressed as being in capital letters. Check both readings and you will see that the Lord is with God the Father. He was always there. We seem to forget one massive detail. When Jesus ascended back to his Father, his reign began. His reign isn't something that will happen in the future. He has reigned since his ascension back into heaven. What does St Paul say in his letter to the Ephesians? Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. And in Ephesians 4, 9 to 12. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. 
So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. The job of the believers was then, and still is, to spread the good news throughout the whole earth, so that the many mansions that Jesus talked about would be filled with people of faith, a people whose sins were forgiven through faith in Jesus and in the one who sent him. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you that you sent your Son into the world to pay the price for our sin on the cross. We thank you that you restored him to the glory that he had with you from eternity before the dawn of creation and that Jesus is sat at your right hand on high interceding on our behalf. We thank you that Jesus will return to bring us to a place that he has prepared for us when we at last see you face to face in the fullness of your glory. Amen. At this point in the service, I generally ask you to join in with me in saying the creed, but seeing as we have a little more time, here's a hymn which focuses on our Lord Jesus being ascended to a tune which used to be well known as it appeared on the BBC Radio 4 Sunday service very frequently. Please join in as we sing. And again, that's the end of the video. Please join us by choosing the next one uh, as we pray and worship God in the third of these videos of worship. <laughs>